Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It is your friendly neighborhood farmer Raznak. We are back on Erlengrat for Alpine Farmer. And today's episode is all about science. That's right, we're going to be doing some precision farming. We're going to be taking some soil samples. We're going to be trying out some fertilization. We're going to figure this stuff out. Or, or attempt to. And probably fail miserably, but that's okay because we will have fun doing it. That's right, we're going to have fun doing the precision farming stuff. Uh, as it sits right now, I have $130,020 in the bank. Sold a little bit of silage, did some contracts and some other stuff. Look at the finance screen from yesterday. Yesterday's profit was $16,200. Um, oh no, that's today's was $16,200. Yesterday's... Yesterday's income was $82,887. I did $51,303 in contract. That was some harvesting, some dirt work, and other stuff. $32,000 worth of biogas income. And some leftover uh, harvest income from when I did the potato contract. But none of the other contracts gave me any income. In fact, only one of them completed without me having to cheat in some crop. Uh, I did the sugar beet harvest here on field 18. I didn't hire a worker. I did all the work myself. We had a yield of 65% from that one, I think. Yes, right here, 65%. And it, when I turned in the crop, it was only 77% complete. So precision farming, I'm, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to say it. Precision farming, if you load it into a previously previous save, is doing something with the contracts. Uh at least for harvesting contracts. I haven't run into any other problems other than harvesting contracts. And you can see here, there's a bunch of stuff already planted. But we have some sowing contracts that we're going to do after we get our fields taken care of. And then there's this big baling contract, which I'm going to do as well. But that's all for a later time and date and probably off camera for most of it. What we're going to do now is we're getting a soil sampler. Now, I'm not going to buy it. I'm just going to lease it. I really don't need, I mean, it's only $867 and it's really cheap to lease. And I just don't see us using it. You know, uh, want to buy it or not? Ah, uh, what the heck? We can buy a used one. Max has got an old used one here. Let's buy the used one. Why not? Ah, uh, let's buy the brand new one. That looks like a new piece of equipment. 17 grand. What the heck? Mm, all right, we bought it. Let's look at this thing. I haven't looked at this. is the very first time in game I've looked at this, I promise. I've watched videos and live streams and some other stuff, but this is pretty cool. The Isaria Scout. It's got the little trays down there. We're going to feed it some dirt like a farming lunch man. Almost said lunch lady. <laughs> Uh, you don't have to have the John Deere Gator for it, I don't believe. I believe it just attaches to a regular three-point. But there is a John Deere Gator that comes in the pack. Again, if you don't know, if you don't know this stuff, then uh, yeah. if I'm the only farm sim YouTuber you watch, then I'm sorry. Um, so where is it at? Cars? Is under cars? Yeah. So this one comes with the Precision Farming DLC as well. And you can get a three-point hitch on the back. It probably has benefits because it's really fast. But, boom. Boom. We got it. Unfold the soil sampling unit. Oh, that's pretty cool. Has some cool sound effects. Nice. Nice. Alright, we're going to run over here to... We only own two fields, and those are the ones we're going to be sampling. Real quick. Just own the two fields. Here in the dirty tractor, this thing is filthy. Hope everybody had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I did. I had a great weekend. Work was busy. Work was tough. Um, but I, I had a really good weekend. Um, in high spirits. Good high spirits. Uh, anticipation for Christmas with my family. Uh, some sad news today is my big, big extended family Christmas that involves like 50-something people has been canceled. Um, I'm really sad. I really am. 
I, I host that every every well not every year but in the last few years I've hosted that and it's really nice to have all my brothers and sisters because there's a whole bunch of us and all the nephews and nieces and cousins and mom and all that good stuff and, and pops and everybody but uh unfortunately that's had to be cancelled just for safety just for safety purposes and that's all we're going to talk about that stuff today we're not going to go on and on about that this 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 stuff but uh yeah that's what we're gonna go with because i i I don't know how you guys feel about it and i'm not gonna get into it you know politically and all that kind of stuff but please please stay safe uh for 99 percent of us or greater um i think it's it's very very low risk i think you don't have too much to be worried about but there is that chance and with large group gatherings, I think that chance increases that people can get sick. And I just don't think it's worth it. All right. Enough of that. Let's unfold our doodad here. So a bunch of people I've been reading, they have edited. They've been doing some editing. They've actually increased the size of the sample area. Um, I'm not going to do that. I sh probably should. But I'm not. I probably should, but I'm not. Just for the sake of time. But, you know, I'll just do this. I'll try it out. Oh, I, I'm missing a little tiny bit right there. So, we got our soul sampler unfolded. Take a sample, press B. That is so cool! Boom! Sample taken! That's pretty neat, actually. That is pretty, pretty cool. I'm curious real quick. I'm going to try something really fast. Just because I can't help myself. Because I'm a GPS junkie. Let's hit auto width. Okay, so there's no no width for that. Okay, that's okay. I was just going to... I was like, hmm. I wonder if there's a way to like set a course. And you know what? There probably is. I'm going to set a manual course here. Got to... This is going to take just a second. And you guys at home can do the same thing. Want to overlap just a little. Not that much. Jeez, Raz, you're horrible at this. I really wish this thing was a square and not a circle. <laughs> like, like, we have right angles everywhere in the game, and then they give us... Oh, here's a circle soul sampler thingy thing. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to hit Control S and... Uh, let's do this. Let's do by three meter width increases. Just, I'm just, I'm really curious. I'm gonna try something. Oh wow, I gotta get way bigger. Uh, wonder how big of a GPS line I can draw. <laughs> ah! Science! That's right. That's what we're doing here. This is science, people. It's the greatness of, of science. And Okay, so there we go. Now you can see our, our line is way over there, and that's a pretty good guidance line. Let's uh, decrease it just a little. I'm going to shift just a little bit right there. And now, now I'm going to have, I'm going to hold a course. And I know a lot of people, there's going to be overlapping, but at least I kind of have a trajectory. So you can use GPS with this. You just have to manually set a course. That's all. You just have to manually set a course. And if you're really smart, you can go in here and you can put in uh, a new track name. Call it Soil Sample. And then, I can't remember, is it this one? Yeah, there you go. And now we have a soil sample. Deal do doodaddy thingy. So we're going to move up just a little bit right here. And then I can't remember what the button was. What's the button? Take soil sample B. Do 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 do. This thing's pretty cool. I think it's cool. We can turn our lines off though. And then we can rotate that 90 degrees. We can do whatever we want with it. Now you can see we have this very fancy. Um, 
Now we can we have a course we can line up and do this with. I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty cool. It's really smart, Raz. Way to go. Re good job, buddy. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I really, really do appreciate it. We can't go too far on the bottom. A lot of overlap. The circle thing has a lot of overlap. But that's that's okay. Oh, we got our little dirt in the tray. Look at little dirts in the tray. <laughs> I like it. I love it. Uh, let's see. Send soil samples for analysis. All right. Send those off. Oh, look it. It's back already. How amazingly fast was that? It's like quicker than UPS was ever in the history of UPS. Uh, we're going to have little gaps, but that's okay. No problem. No problem at all. This is very, very cool. I love this. Oh man, this is this is really really neat. I think this is uh, this is pretty. This is like as groundbreaking as seasons. I really think it is. And I, I hope I hope going forward they. Uh, now I wonder because of the circle. I'm gonna try something here. Just because I'm weird. We're gonna, we're gonna do this. We're going to catch the greatest amount of the circles we can. And see, we have our course, so I don't have to steer. We got this really cool circle. And then we can just fill in the gaps after we do our course. We could just fill in the... Because the gaps should be very similar to the size of our, our circle. Should be. So like if we jump over here to this area now. Nope. That didn't work out as well as I thought. <laughs> oh. Um. Here we just set a new course. Like this. Yeah. There we go. I think we have our width down. We need a new course. Alright. <laughs> I don't know what I'm freaking doing! Oh, this is awful. Turn it off now. Alright, hit B. So you know what I'm going to be doing for the next little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take soil samples of 24 and I'm going to take soil samples of this grass field because I don't know I don't know how this works because it's not a numbered field. I'm assuming it works. Well, I mean, we can already see it took something here. So I'm assuming that it works. So we're going to have to uh we're going to have to keep plugging along. Oh, this is like a good little chunk right here. There's overlap, but it kind of—it's a good chunk. That's a good chunky chunk right there. All right, <laughs> keep taking soil samples. When we get back, we'll work on fertilizer. God, I've been talking for 13 minutes. Hurry up, Raz. All right, I'll see you in just a second. All righty, welcome back. We are done with the soil sampling. I will show you um, kind of the soil map that we're at right now. So, not the best. This is, I guess, loam. Is it loam? Is that the best, I think? Yes, I think that's kind of probably your best. And then you got sandy loam and then loamy sand. And I think silty clay is like the worst. But So we have this, this stretch that we're kind of working on. And uh, nitrogen is all bad. Um, it's really like how it shows us. So like my pH value like right here is perfect because I've been putting lime down, but my nitrogen is bad. There's like none. There's no nitrogen in the field. So we're going to have to put down some nitrogen. Here, pH values like OK green and then OK yellow. Um, OK, OK, yeah. So I'm putting down uh, lime right now because lime, the lime fill point's like right there. And it's really cheap. And so far, if I'm reading this correctly, um, I'm looking at a 47% yield increase, and I've only spent $1,484. Now, I did spend $5,000 on freaking soil samples. I'm in the wrong business. I need to be a lab rat. But yeah, this thing is really, really cool because you can see over here on the side uh, our pH value lime application automatic 
computer GPS guided really really smart tractor stuff is um, is measuring out the right application to get the pH to the target level and based the target level varies based upon soil so each soil type has a specific target level which is good for the pH for the crop that's planted if I understand correctly I'm not a very smart man so you have to forgive me but uh, yeah that's what we're doing and it's it's really cool it's really cool and I like it how it, it meters it out it changes you know like right now we're putting three point now we're up to four point eight two tons per hectare hectare 4.82 4.82 so this this place right here needs lots of lime and you can see it just like starts burning through it now we're down to 4.82 it's pretty cool how it automatically measures it out it's really neat I like it it's kind of fun I only have one suggestion and this may be really nitpicky and really stupid look see it cut off um, but I suggest you see this little pH value lime application thingy that's in the F1 menu that you can't see unless you have this ugly F1 menu up. Come on, giants. You couldn't have put that like at the bottom of the screen next to the mini map. Now it shows the pH, but it'd be really cool if like down. Um, how do I do this? Um. I don't know. Uh, where am I? So, oh man, it's gonna be kind of hard to show in here because I don't have a mouse icon. But you, like down here at the bottom, it's down here, down here next to the mini map, I, I'll put it. I put an arrow down in post. Like you could put that that lime application graph thingy that shows how much you're putting down and all that stuff. You could put that down at the bottom. You didn't have to put it in the F1 menu. Like it would pop up. When you're putting down, it would just pop up down there. I'm sure you can do it. You can make it pop up in the F1 menu. You surely could write some code and make it pop up down there at the bottom so we don't have to have this ugly F1 menu up the whole time. Giants. Get with the program. I like to see my screen here. All right, so if any of you really, really smart modders out there want to do that, <laughs> have fun with it. You don't even have to credit me with the idea. You can just do it because I, I'm I'm horrible. I, I I know nothing about modding other than some basic XML editing. That's all I know. That's it. That's all I'm willing to learn because well I don't even have I don't have time for what I do do. It feels like. But then again I'm pretty inefficient with my time usage and I'll spend entire days playing World of Warships and not get anything done just because I like to blow up things. <laughs> I'm going to get back to putting down lime, and then after that, I think we're going to try some digestate. Because I should have quite a bit of digestate in the tank. So, I'm going to put lime on this grass field here, and then I need to put lime over here on this grass field. Right here, field 24. So, this will all be lined up, limed up, and prepared for our fall cut, which will be really cool. Uh... Again, having a lot of fun with precision farming so far. The only issue I've run into are the contracts with pre-existing save. I'm really interested to find out next season uh, if if it kind of fixes it as we do uh, do different stuff on the fields, as we do like fertilizing contracts and other stuff. If it if it fixes it, we'll find out. All right, everybody. I'll see you in just a second with a nice. We'll be doing some digestate probably over on field 24. All right, the liming is completed. All the lime is perfect. I walked around the field and everything said perfect. So happy about that. It looks like, again, pH levels change based upon um, um, soil type. Over here on this, the loam, it, it can, this stuff takes a lot of lime. Like it takes eight tons per hectare where like this loamy sand only takes like 1.3 tons per hectare. It's kind of weird, I guess. And then again, it just depends on, you know, soil type and how it holds pH and all that stuff. Oh, we got 232,000 liters of digestate. And look, it magically goes into the tank. All right. I don't know how much nitrogen we'll get out of this. I know there's a set value for slurry digestate and other stuff and if you haven't watched it farmer klein has a really good tutorial video 
how-to videos. Um, it's like a three-part series, and it really, really explains well all the different ins and outs of precision farming. Uh, a lot of information that I just can't recite. There's just so much going on. We'll just, we'll just play with it. All right, let's see here. Turn on our tank and we'll put down the stinky stuff. Stinky stink water. Um, let's see. Wow. So if I'm looking right, application rate of 14. Is that metric tons per hectare? And we get half a percentage of nitrogen. Hmm. But man, the slurry's going far. It's going really far. I mean, usually, usually, or when you apply this stuff, it just burns through it really fast. So, I mean, we're burning through it really like what now at only at 10 I think metric tons let's see here nitrogen still bad still very bad <laughs> so but that's okay because this is still early in its growth you see um where is the grass oh wrong one gonna go to grass here we go and then we go to growth and see we're gonna be able to apply um digestate one more time before the grass is ready now over here this stuff is kind of ready to cut, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use chemical solid fertilizer over here. I'm going to use solid fertilizer on it because I'm pretty sure you get way more nitrogen out of the solid fertilizer than you do the slurry. I don't know exactly what those numbers are, um, but I will figure them out. But yeah, it looks like we get 0.5% nitrogen um, on the field. So it looks like the optimal, man, I wish I wish that just showed up without being in the in cap. Looks like the optimal nitrogen amount is what what, what did it say? 180 kilograms per hectare is what it wants in the soil. I'm assuming. But yeah, we're just we got 100. We went the some parts have 80, some parts have 100. I guess it just really depends on the application rate on the soil. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's neat. It's neat how it does it. And you can manually do this. I, do, I don't know how. <laughs> but there is a way to manually do all this. You don't have to use the auto apply. There's a manual application that you can do with this. Uh, again, I couldn't even begin to tell you how to do it as our, as our tractor becomes covered in white dust. But I do like how the digestate goes a little further. Seems to be going a little further. Probably get two or three passes out of one tank, which would be nice. I feel like Tom Pemberton. <laughs> Is he want to see like right here? We're only applying seven. I'm, I'm assuming metric tons per hectare. Isn't that what M3 M with the three and the? Uh, isn't that what that means? I don't know. Now we're up to ten. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's really neat how it just climbs up and down and adjusts. It's very fancy high-tech equipment in our old Bure tractor. It's all in the tablet, folks. It's all in the it's all farm tablet. It's all aftermarket stuff. Anybody can get this stuff now. Anybody. But yeah, I really feel like Tom Pemberton right now in his new slurry tanker. If you don't know who Tom Pemberton is, just go or go into YouTube, put Tom Pemberton. A, he's a British dairy farmer. He's, I think he's kind of funny. It's a little weird, quirky. Really meshes with my personality, <laughs> but no, really, a lot of information. And uh, his his, I think it's his dad. He calls him the ginger beard man or whatever, something like that. Uh, I like his dad. His dad's pretty funny, and they're very informative people. And it's really neat to see how they do dairy farming so much different than how uh, dairy farming is done in the United States. It's, it's really cool to watch. So, yeah, check out Tom Pemberton. Yeah, this tank's going to go very far. I mean, we're only talking three, probably three full tanks, three or four full tanks to do a whole field. It's not bad. That's only 32,000 liters of digestate. Oh, man, I wonder if I should... No, I'm going to use chemical fertilizer over there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. To see what kind of increase I get out of it. 
Once I empty this tank, I'm going to go run and grab the fertilizer real quick. And we're going to try it out because I'm just curious to see how much nitrogen you get per application. Again, Farmer Klein went over all this stuff. Oh, sorry. Didn't see you there. Gosh, traffic. I've never seen so much traffic in the mountains of my life. Where are all these people going? Um, but yeah, I know each kind of fertilizer gives you a different amount of nitrogen per, per application. So we're going to find out. Hurry up, Digestate. Man, I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> All right, let me grab the Furt Spreader, and we'll jump over here, and we'll try it. We'll come back to putting Digestate on off-camera. I mean, you kind of get the gist of it. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll put some chemical fertilizer and see what kind of application rate we get out of it. I'll see you in just a second. And we are back putting down the solid furt. And you can see right away, it goes from orange or red right to green. And the reason why is we're putting way more nitrogen in the ground with this. Looking at 27% nitrogen, 500, you can see the rate. We're looking at about 600 kilograms per hectare. But yeah, huge, huge difference in applications. I mean huge difference because we're perfect with one single application on grass of the solid fertilizer you go from bad to perfect because over here we're bad we actually have zero nitrogen in the ground over here 160 zero 160 we're over there it's going to take a couple couple passes probably of the digestate but the digestate's free really it's practically free so uh, financially speaking, I think I think you're going to look at a little bit of difference here because slurry it gives you a total amount and we have a yield increase, but we have no cost associated with it. Where with mineral fertilizer, we have a cost associated with it. Right now, $138 for just this little strip. So we're going to spend thousands of dollars to fertilize this, but we're only going we're not going to spend any money other than our time to fertilize that. So there is that all to take into consideration. Um, yeah, which I think, you know, it's pretty cool. Now this is just grass work because I, I haven't played around with crops or anything along those lines. So I really don't know um, what kind of crop yields or how it affects crops. Other than what I've, like I said, what I've learned from watching Farmer Klein. I, I'm going to have to watch that again because I think there's a couple things that I missed. Or... I'm, I might have just not been paying attention. That's a very good possibility because I have the attention span of, a, of an 11 year old. So there is that to consider as well. But yeah, this this will work out pretty well. I'm wondering if you can see again, it, your rate changes based upon your soil type. So we're looking at 518 kilograms per hectare. And this will change when we get into a different soil type, I'm pretty sure. So we're watching it 518, 518, still 518. I talk and nothing happens. I'm one, I wonder how long it'll keep the nitrogen too. Now we're at 592, because I'm sure the soil type changed and it needs more nitrogen for the grass. So, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of confusing information, but like I said, uh, there will be links in the description to Farmer Klein's how-tos. If you have not watched them, definitely check those out. He did a great, great job at researching it, trying it out, and really showcasing what the mod does and all of its effects. So it's really worth checking out. I would do that. And in the meantime... I'm just going to keep farming, folks. We're going to put down bunches of bunches of fertilizer in some capacity. I got a bunch of contracts to do. We're going to do some sowing contracts. Uh, I got a fertilizing contract here for field 22. I'll probably go ahead and knock that out. I might use digestate for it if I have some left. And then we're going to, I'm going to do this bailing contract. All that stuff will be off camera because you've seen me do all of it. While I'm doing that, I'll be selling uh silage at the BGA keep getting our bank account up because in the spring I want to start an actual arable farm we're going to pick an area we're going to build it out and we're going to do some real real farming instead of just all this grass work that I've done for months all right everybody till next time take care stay safe 
Thanks for watching. See you later.